In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at this mince scene right here, and we're specifically going to look at how it is that we can use the rigid body world to pose the mints inside of the container. And we're also going to take a look at how it is that we can actually animate and drop some mints into the container. So two parts, one is posing and the other is animating. So the first thing that I'm going to do over here is we're going to take a look at how this is structured because I'm going to give you this scene to work with so we don't have to do a lot of setup. If we come to the mint container, I've got four sub collections with inside of it. And it's the lower one that we're primarily going to work with. Inside of that, we have two objects. One is the colored mesh component, which is the blue part. And inside of that, we have a metal component. And that's what's actually going to catch the mints. So we want to pose them in there. We don't want to just try and place them in there by hand, because it's not going to look as natural as if we just have them sort of drop into place. So let's come in here and turn off the upper component. I'm going to turn off the label. Okay, so if we come over here, the metal part is what's going to catch the mints. So we need to first come in and note that when you're going to be working with a physics system, you're going to come down here to the scene properties and inside of it is rigid body world. So this is where you're going to have global variables that deal with all of this physics stuff as it deals with the rigid body simulations. So with this metal parts selected, I'm going to come down to physics properties and we're going to enable rigid body. Now this is not going to be an active component. It's simply going to be interacting with or catching as it were the actual mints. So we want to set it to passive. The other important thing to set here is we want to change this from convex hole. And we want to go right to mesh. If we use convex hole, the objects are going to bounce off it because convex hole is like wrapping an object in sort of a simple representation of the object that would not contain sort of the interior. It would just fill over this object and the mints would just bounce off. Okay, so mesh is correct. We're going to come down. We're not going to do too many settings to overwhelm you with too many settings. So I'm going to come down here to sensitivity. This we need to change to 0.01. My scene scale is set up to the correct size. So we're dealing with an object that's only about three and a half inches, and I'm using inches because I'm in the US and that's what we use. So setting your scene to the correct scale is important. Now, once we're done with that, that's all we need to do. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come to the mint right here. We're going to enable that to be a rigid body also. So in this particular case, it is going to be an active object. We also want it to be convex hole. So it's the exact opposite. If we come over here and we take a look at this mesh, let's do frame selected so we can see this here. It's an enclosed object. It's a closed subdivision surface object. And in this particular case, a convex hole is a simplified mesh that sort of simulates it, wraps it around it, and it's fastest to do that for this object. And then the next thing you need to note is that it does not have a collision margin. We're going to leave that off, and that's going to work best here. And everything else we can leave as it is. We don't need to do anything else. We can test this now. The easiest way to test this is to simply press the space bar. Ta-da! And it dropped in and was caught by the metal. So what we need to do now is just create a series of duplicates. I'm going to switch over here into the top view and I'm going to zoom out. And then I want to create some duplicates of this. If we come up to the object menu, we can see that we've got a duplicate objects and we've got a duplicate linked. We don't want to do duplicate objects because that will create an absolute duplicate of it that's unlinked to the original. So I'm going to click duplicate linked and then press the X key to come over just a little bit. And I want to replicate that command. So up here in Edit, you just come over here to Repeat Last, which is Shift-R. And I can press Shift-R two more times to get that replicated over. So these are all linked together. If I edit one, all of them receive the same edits. Press the Shift key 
over here in the collection and select all of those. And I'm going to press Option D and then move that. I only want to move along the Y axis, so I'm going to press the Y key, click, and then press Shift R to give us all of those. So now I can come over here and I'm going to select the first one, hold the Shift key, select the last one. So now I can come up into the front view here by pressing little Y widget right there. And I'm going to press Option D again, but in this case I'm going to press the Z key. And I want to come up just a little ways, and I'll show you why here in a minute, about that far. Okay, press Shift R one more time. So there are all of our duplicates. Now we can test this. If I press the space bar, you can see those drop in there. How, it, that's it. That's pretty simple. But I'm going to show you, let's, let's jump back here, something to watch for. Now in this particular case, it worked pretty well, but you may need to come back up here to the scene properties. And under some situations, it may cause some of the particles to drop through your objects. So for instance, if I take these and I move them up a little bit higher like that, and then I press the space bar again, do you see how a bunch of them dropped through? If that happens, you're going to need to increase the resolution of the solving function. They're moving so quickly that it's not solving in between frames fast enough to catch them interacting with that tin object. So let's come up here and change this to 25 for steps per frame and the solver iterations also to 25. And then we can press the space bar again. We can see those drop in there. Okay. Now this is only for posing purposes. Once they kind of get down there and they're in a place that you like, well, you're pretty much done. But I want to step back and I want to show us how to do something else that could even help to sort of randomize these even just a little bit more, just in case the regularity right here imposes itself once they land. So let's come in here and do something pretty cool. I'm going to come up here to the object menu and we're going to come down to transform and then we're going to switch all the way down here to randomize transform. And it, nothing's really going to initially happen until you expand out the options down here. And I want to randomize these just a little bit along the Z axis. So we're, we're at a pretty small scale, so I don't need to do a lot. I'm going to do 0.25. And that just randomized the position a little bit. In fact, I think maybe 0.1 would work a little bit better. And let's do the same thing with rotation. We can do this interactively, and you can see these sort of rotate. And you can just play with each of the axes right here until you get a little bit of randomization sort of built into the posed position. Now, the only problem that you want to be sort of careful of is noting if any of them are interacting with each other or interfacing or overlapping. That'll cause bizarre behavior and odd behavior. So just take a quick look just to make sure none of that has happened. Once that's done, once you've got them into a position you've liked, press the spacebar key again and let them drop in. And one of them dropped out, which is okay. Once we're done right here, there's one sitting up out here on a ledge that I think I want to, I want to get rid of. But if, if you're happy with how they've dropped in and you're done, this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to get them into this state. We're not going to animate them over time. I want them to be locked into this location, but I'm at frame 36. We're going to be animating a little bit later and I don't want these animating. These are dropped in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the object menu right here. We're going to come back down to rigid world and we're going to come down and we're going to invoke the apply transformation function. And what that will do is it will lock those into the default starting position. It's now baked those in so that when we come back into the zero point, that's their new starting point. We could animate them again from this position going forward, but they're now in a posed position. So that's all we need to do. I'm going to come up here to this one and press the X key and delete that because I don't need that the way it is. And I think those are in a good position. So now 
all we need to do is come in here and just do a quick preview and there are our posed mints. Now you could take a look at this and you could say well you know what if some of them are you can see right here <laughs> do you see how this one right here is sort of up on end well you could come up here and you could move this over like that and you could say well I'd really like that one to perhaps rest a little bit better now I could come in here and, and press space bar and I could let that one fall into place because you see that's how we generated that new position the new starting point and now I've got a new starting point again so all I need to do is I'm going to come over here and do a select objects come back again to the object menu come down to rigid body world and apply transform come back to zero ta -da, and that's it so since these are now posed they're in the position we don't want to worry about these going through an animation or calculation cycle what we do is we come over back to our scene properties and there's this button remove rigid body world remove that and now these are baked in and they're done there's no more animation so now we can go in and we can animate these in another part of our scene without worrying about these changing.